It's 2020, and it's never been easier to deploy your own self-hosted website securely and quickly using innovative technology like Nginx Proxy Manager and Docker. These two tools have revolutionized the way we deploy websites, and today I'll be setting up WordPress behind Reverse Proxy using your own domain name. Previously on Geeked, we installed Docker and Portainer on Ubuntu in two minutes. It's this video right here. If you don't have Docker and Portainer installed on your system, you're going to need to do that in order to do this project. So go ahead and reference this video to see how to do that. To get started on today's project, we'll be installing Nginx Proxy Manager through Portainer. Nginx Proxy Manager allows you to expose your services easily and securely over the internet without exposing the ports through your router. And what's really cool is you get free SSL certificates through Let's Encrypt. To make things easier and to save time, we're going to be using the self-hosted pro Portainer templates created by myself and self-hosted pro on this github repo which i'll have all the links in the description below so you can reference these for your use we'll click on template and then we'll click on the template json file and then lastly we'll click on raw we'll get this link in the top address bar and click copy then we'll go over to our portainer in our settings enable use external templates add the url in here click paste and then click save settings once your settings are saved you can go into app templates and you'll see all of these applications listed here if you don't see the applications try clicking refresh and see if they show up then this is where we're going to install nginx reverse proxy manager so if we just type in proxy at the top and then we'll click on nginx reverse proxy manager or nginx proxy manager in this case here you'll be presented with a couple options where you can change port settings. Down below the ports, you'll see the volume mapping options where all of your files will be saved on your system. That's this line here. If you need that to be changed, please make sure you know what you're doing before you do that. Otherwise, the default path will be just fine. Okay, I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and click deploy the container. We'll let this deploy. It could take a couple seconds or even a couple minutes. Well, it said successful. We have a green running here and the web UI should be on port 81. So if we open a new tab, here we are. So the login is admin at example.com and the password is change me. So we do need to change this. Uh, you can put in whatever email you want here. I will just put in it's masshosted at gmail.com and then click save. Now we have to change the default password so you type change me and then whatever password you want to put in here make sure it's secure then click save. Well congratulations you've successfully installed Nginx Proxy Manager but there's a few things we need to do to make this work. We need to log into our router and make sure ports 80 and 443 are forwarded to this machine IP address. So let's go ahead and get started doing that. I happen to have Verizon Fios so I hopped on to the router using 192.168.1.1, logged in, and went to port forwarding. And here it is right here. So I typed in the IP address of the machine I'm going to be forwarding the HTTP web server to. I will click add, and I will do another one. The HTTPS, secure. Then we'll click add once again. Basically what this does is it tells Nginx Proxy Manager what machine it's forwarding your traffic to. That wasn't too difficult. So now we're going to go ahead and get started installing our WordPress website. So we can put it behind our Proxy Manager. We're going to do that using the stacks and a compose file. Again, all that information will be in the description below so you can reference it and copy and paste it here as well. We're going to go ahead and give it a name of WordPress. And then we'll paste the stack file in below. All the information in here you shouldn't have to change. It should be just good to go. So you have your password. We have our database using MySQL and the latest WordPress image here. All we have to do now is click deploy the stack and see if it works. And you also want to make sure you have port 8977 free for your WordPress installation. If not, you can change this port to something else. All right, apparently we have success. So let's go ahead and take a look at our containers page. And it looks like we have the database and the WordPress instance both running. So if we open a new tab and go to port 8977 within our machine IP, there it is. So we need to stop what we're doing. We don't want to continue the installation through the IP address because it will assign the web address the IP address. And we don't want to do that. We want to go ahead and set up a subdomain for our website. So let's go ahead and do that now. For this demonstration, I'm using Porkbun Domain Management and you can use anything. I'll even show you a quick demonstration how to use cPanel. 
to use a pork bun one, it's pretty simple. You just click the drop down menu under details and we need to set up a, a record, which is this little edit button right here. So we'll click edit. We're going to make this blog.geeked.me and the answer is going to be your actual IP address that your ISP assigns you. Or you can just Google what is my IP and it should give you that IP address. And that's gonna go in where it says answer right here. So we'll paste that in there. Everything else can say. It's pretty simple. It gives you an A record by default. So we'll leave that as well. And we'll click add and here it is, blog.geek.me. Now we need to take this subdomain, copy it, and then go into our Nginx proxy manager and add a new proxy host. So let's go ahead and add one. We'll put this domain in, hit enter. We're gonna leave it as HTTP for now. The IP is simply the IP of your computer or in this case, your website server. So it'll be this up here, grab that. And then the port that your website is hosted on. If you remember correctly, it was 8977 in our portainer settings. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here it is right here. So you can see that it is on 8977. Next thing we wanna do is go to the SSL section. Here, we're going to go ahead and click on none, but we're gonna drop down to request a new SSL certificate. We'll also select force SSL and HTTP slash two support. Lastly, we'll make sure we click I agree and then click save. This process could take uh, anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. There it is. You set up your very first proxy host using Nginx Proxy Manager, but it's kind of a little trickster and I'll show you why. Make sure when you go in and you edit this, you click on SSL again and make sure you force it once again and you shouldn't have to do it after that. For whatever reason, it seems to be bugged and you have to go in and do it and then click save again. And then you should be all set. Okay, this is the moment of truth. If we click this, it should launch our blog on a secure SSL. So let's click it and see what happens. And there it is. We have a secure website that's ready to be installed. Now you understand why I didn't want you to continue this using the IP address. Now you can go ahead and finish installing your WordPress install. Here we can see our website using the subdomain that we set up on a secure SSL. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. There it is, it says verified by Let's Encrypt. Well, I think a congratulations is in order. You've successfully set up your very own secure website using a reverse proxy. So congratulations, piece of cake. There's much more to learn about Nginx Proxy Manager and there are quite a few things you can do in here. If for whatever reason you wanna disable your website, you can go ahead and do that and then refresh the website and you'll notice that it is no longer on line. There. Pretty cool. It's like flipping a switch. You can just turn your website off and on for whatever reason if you ever wanted to do that. Then you can just go back in, re-enable it, go back, refresh, and your website's back online. This is a little bonus footage for you. I did tell you back earlier in the video that I would show you how to do your domain setup in cPanel, and that's what we're doing now. If you look on the left panel and you click domains, and then we go to advanced zone editor, all you have to do is select a domain, enter the subdomain name or the host name, which in this case it would be blog, and then tab down to TTL, put 300. And then of course the address is going to be your WAN IP address. So that's where you would put that and then click add record. So it's kind of similar, just a different web UI, that's all. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you found it helpful, leave me a thumbs up. Are you subscribed? Consider subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, leave me a comment in the comment section below and uh, I'll definitely get back to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Got some other things I'm cooking up for you guys I think you're gonna like. Some cool apps on the way. Stay tuned.